Welcome back to the Servants of Grace podcast and to our theology segment today. One of our listeners writes in today, and can you help me to learn about the importance of encouragement and confronting Satan's lies in my life? Well, this is such a great question, and to be honest, I don't know a single Christian that doesn't at some point, or hasn't, at some point in their Christian life struggled with discouragement. Encouragement is a potent tool the Lord has given to his people to care, to love, and to serve one another and others all around him. It was a tough day, and I had dealt with some very challenging situations as a substitute teacher. And I went to sit with one of my pastors, who is also one of my very close friends. And I remember at this time feeling so frustrated, so upset, and so ready to throw in the towel. And I will never forget that he just sat there and he listened attentively. When I was done, he came around from his side of the desk to my side and asked if I would just stand up, and he proceeded to hug me. And then after the hug, we, we sat down in the chair across from each other, chairs across from each other, and he clasped my hand and he prayed for me. That day I left his office and headed home a, a lot lighter than when I walked in. When I walked into his office, I felt like the whole world was going to cave in on me, but when I left, I felt loved by God and by my pastor. See, encouragement for the Christian is a lot like a heavyweight boxer going into the ring. Satan is about to land that knockout punch and then Bam! Before that big time money maker rains down its tear, in comes the counterpunch. Encouragement is a counterpunch to Satan's lies. The devil comes in to, to steal, devour, and to kill, whispering his evil wiles and saying to the Christian, Yeah, you're not good enough. You're rotten. You're a loser. Just give up. Lay down that sword of God, the word of God. It doesn't matter at all. But many times we're so in need of encouragement, we don't even know we need it. And the truth is, all around you and I are people who need your encouragement. They're facing what feels like the the heavyweight prize boxer blow about to land on them and they're just sitting in there waiting for it. I have known many Christians who are like this. They want to love and care. I have friends in ministry who are desperate for that encouragement. And how do I know? I ask, they tell me. Most of my friends are in either some form of writing, editing ministry or vocational pastoral ministry. And yet we haven't even got to the person in the pew right next to you Sunday in and Sunday out who needs encouragement. You see, as Christians, we're not left without encouragement. We have the grace of God. Jesus also has promised to be with us and summons us before the throne of grace to receive his help. All of this is why Hebrews 13 is so powerful. This verse says, but exhort one another every day as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You see, what Hebrews 3.13 is telling us today is vital. Today is the day to encourage one another. Perhaps that's even right now. Why? Hebrews 3.13 tells us that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You see, sin, it takes you further down the road than you ever want to go. But it does so, so seductively. Sin comes prancing around the ring saying, oh, that's just a little sin here. And then, wha-bam! In comes that full right cross, and then the left jab, and then it goes for the money make, the knockout blow. Well, today you may be facing what feels like that knockout blow, and you don't know where to turn, dear Christian. And I want to say this to you today. You do not need to be knocked out. You do not need to go out of commission. You don't need to hit the mat. You need to hit your Bible. You need to get in a local church and you need to get involved in the life of the local church. Well, many Christians want to know if they can be used by God, but believe that they can't, which that's not true, my friend. You today, dear Christian, can be used by God. All around you are people facing challenging situations and people. You see, I need you and you need me. Together, we need one another in our local churches. Well, sometimes, well, that's going to mean I need hard and loving words spoken in love. And other times it's going to mean I need you to tell me soft words spoken in love. And sometimes that's going to mean like my former pastor and my good friend, I'm going to need an arm around the shoulder, a hug and a prayer after listening to me talk. So I I don't know where you are or what's going on in your life or if you feel like today you're about to face that seeming knockout punch. But understand this, Satan may be primed, locked and loaded to unload on you and land that knockout moneymaker punch. But that punch can never fully take you out, dear Christian. The death of Jesus forever satisfied the wrath of God 
in the place of sinners and for their sin. And now through him, Christians are friends of God. And all of this is why Christians can care, why they can love, and why they can encourage one another because of the grace of God. If you today, dear Christian, want to be used by God, and I'm guessing that's so, yes, dear Christian, then take time today to encourage somebody in your home and in your local church. Church member, get to know fellow church members so you can pray for one another, so you can know how to encourage one another specifically. And when you do encourage one another church members, do so because you see the grace of God at work in their lives and you want to encourage you. So the next time you feel like, well, the Lord can't use me or won't use me. Remember, he can't. He has done all he's done for you and me in his finished and sufficient work so we can encourage and spur one another on to love and to good deeds. So guess what? Let's you and I as Christians have Hebrews 13, 13 be our aim, whether in our local churches or outside of it as the body of Christ. Let's encourage one another today lavishly with the grace of Jesus so that we can bear each other's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ, both in our local churches and outside of it in our vocation and communities. I want to thank you for listening to this episode of the Servants of Grace podcast and to our theology segment. If you enjoy this episode, I just want to encourage you to tell your friends about us on social media. Send them the link to this episode so that they can listen to it too and, and they can share it with their friends. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you.